Okay, well, you know, this is a tough case coming up. A set of twins is born to a surrogate mother. She decides she wants to keep the babies from the couple who paid her, but neither the birth mother nor the adopted parents is biologically related to the twins. So whose babies are these? Juju's here with a story. And, and Juju, this raises all kinds of emotional and philosophical questions about parenthood. Absolutely, and legal questions too, because this case really strikes at the very heart of what it means to be a mother. Is it defined by a genetic link or is it the act of actually giving birth? There are roughly 750 births a year involving gestational surrogacy, where none of the potential parents are related to the babies. And what happened in this case is a legal nightmare for the couple who placed their trust in a surrogate. Well, this is uh, Ethan and Bridget's nursery. The nursery is stocked with everything a parent could need, except a baby. Scott and Amy say they'll never forget the day they had to say goodbye to Ethan and Bridget forever. It was a terrible feeling walking them out. and uh, You were in tears. I, I was. The idea of uh, standing here and looking out the window as her and her mother are, are loading our children into their van and driving away. They had to give their twins back because the surrogate mother did what surrogates rarely do. She changed her mind. It all started eight years ago. From the moment they married, Scott and Amy Kehoe knew they wanted to be parents. We wanted a couple of wrestlers in our lives and, uh, you know, working on cars and just spending time together, maybe just hugging on the couch. But after two miscarriages and five failed rounds of costly IVF, the Michigan couple turned to a surrogacy website and chose Shelly Baker, a Michigan wife and mother of four who'd been a surrogate twice before. The Keos bought sperm and eggs from anonymous donors. This meant the babies wouldn't be biologically related to the Kehoes or the surrogate. How did you move forward? Was there a legal contract? Was there a verbal agreement? It was a verbal. We just kind of verbally said the medical will all be covered and you know, expenses like that would be covered. Shelley got pregnant with twins. Last July, she gave birth to Ethan Paul and Bridget Lilly. Would you each step up to the podium? A week after the birth, everyone headed to court so the Keos could be named the twins' legal guardians. And it was there, Shelley says, she learned that Amy Kehoe had a history of mental illness and a misdemeanor criminal record. Ms. Kehoe, have you ever been convicted of a crime? Yes, I have. I had mental a lot of challenges mentally, a psychiatric disorder. In the courtroom, it was the first time I'd heard all of that. What were you feeling? I felt irresponsible as a mother, you know, as a surrogate. I felt like I somehow failed in the, all of this. Listening to this woman tell about her psychotic disorder and her anxiety and the pills she has to take. Because in your view, having a history of mental illness or some drug abuse makes you an unfit parent forever? No, it just makes me uncomfortable because I didn't know enough about what she had. She knew I'd seen a psychiatrist. I told her that. Nothing was hidden. Nothing was ever hidden. Have you been to their But home? that day in court, Shelley still agreed to hand the babies over. You're satisfied that they would be capable and good parents to these children? From what I've observed, they, they love these babies very much. Okay. The Keos had a joyful homecoming with the twins that day. And after a month of bonding, they were shocked when Shelley went to court saying Amy's mental health and criminal history posed too much of a risk. Legally, she was able to take the twins back. But Amy Kehoe argued it's been nine years since she'd been arrested for cocaine possession. What's more, a social worker deemed them fit parents. And letters from Amy's psychiatrist gave her a glowing recommendation saying she had faithfully taken her medication for nine years for a psychotic disorder involving anxiety and depression. She'd never missed an appointment and that her medical condition would not affect her being a fit parent. But that didn't satisfy the surrogate. So in your view, the professional psychiatrist's opinion wasn't enough? For well, he's not there every day with her. I mean, what happens if she quits going to him? If she stops taking her meds two, three, even two, three months down the road. But lawyer Melissa Brisman, who's handled a thousand surrogacy cases, believes the babies belong with the Keos. Given that the surrogate mom didn't know that the adoptive mom had this psychiatric condition, does that justify her keeping the babies? 
No, it doesn't justify her keeping the babies. She still was compensated for all of her expenses in the arrangement. She still agreed to hand the babies over. She just became judgmental of their ability to parent with not really all that much evidence. It was almost like she was prejudiced of mental illness. But Shelley and Paul Baker were legally able to keep the twins because Michigan is one of five states where surrogacy contracts are not recognized. Shelley and Paul Baker have legally changed the twins' names to Peyton and Danny and say their whole family is in love with its newest members. Peyton's our little laid-back, kind of polite-mannered man, smiling constantly. She's the drama queen. Those are our babies. They're, they're not Shelley's, they're our babies. And it's legally, she is legally able to kidnap them. They may not call it kidnapping, but that's what it is. They're not their babies anymore. They're our babies. We had to take our babies back. Now, those twins will be raised by the surrogate. The Kehos have dropped their legal case. They were told by their lawyer that because of the Michigan law, they don't have much of a claim. And they say they feel justice did not prevail. Now, the Bakers, on the other hand, say they could simply not, in good conscience, hand the twins over to the Kehos. Boy, you feel for both sides you really in, do. in this case. And, you know, we have on our website how the laws vary among different states. If you're going to get into this, you really have to do your research. You have to get a lawyer. Not only do the laws vary by state to state, they actually vary sometimes by county. So this is a very sort of unregulated, really difficult legal morass to try to traverse. Okay, Juju, thanks very much.